Hmm, you know, I really wonder what I would do if I didn't have coffee for these intros. Smash like for coffee. First things first, check out these new panels I just put up right here. Boom. That's something I've sort of been wishy-washy on since I built this room was that section of the room. There's a little bit of a funny little flutter going on from the ceiling and floor and uh, put those panels up actually uh, for this video. What drum sound do you prefer? Big and wide open? Or do you like it to be super fat and snug and just... <clears throat> the reason I ask is because today we are going to get some super fat and tight drum sounds. I'm also going to record them on Universal Audio's Luna software. But I'm not gonna talk about that because today we're talking about drums. So real quick, here's the thing about drum sounds. You can have your preference, I have my preference, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to what's best for the song. I touch on this in the producing music from home series, which you can see right here. As you can tell, the room I record drums in is already a small and pretty dead sounding room. Surprisingly, you can still get pretty live sounding drums in here. So I wanted to really take it to the max. Part of the reason is I have a project that I'm doing drums on, and then I also wanted to do a new drum cover for a very dancey style song. And both of them, I thought it would be very appropriate to have super tight drums. Now the first thing that I did was I actually deadened the room even more. So there's a couple different ways you can go about doing this. It depends on what you have available. So for me, I actually made a bunch of absorption panel, absorption, absorption, right? Absorption panels last year for, you know, what would be this room and turns out I didn't really need them. However, I did use them up here. So I, I have some spare panels available that I've been keeping in the attic. So I went up there and I grabbed some of these panels I brought them down and I sort of staggered them around the kit, just a couple feet away from the kit, bringing it in close, really tightening up the room around the drum. So the, there's just basically, it's just dead. Make it dead. Now, one thing that I've always loved, even when I was recording drums in a big room, I love putting like gobos or panels or something right behind the drummer. Basically as close as you can get while not intruding on the drummer's performance, getting something right up around the back, because that for some reason just creates a very desirable sound to me for drums that I like to hear where it's very tight and it sort of builds up a lot of the low frequencies for the kit. So I did that, I put a panel right behind me when I'm playing, you can see it literally right behind my butt. I will say if you don't have any panels, you can actually do this with just blankets, especially if you have packing blankets or just any kind of blankets. Just hang them around the kit, find things to hang them on. You can hang them over a chair or something. The next thing that I did is I actually took a blanket, essentially draped the blanket over the kick drum, the top and around the side of the kick drum, which helps isolate the microphones that are on the kick drum from any of the bleed from the other drums. The way I used to do that was actually used extra mic stands to prop up the blanket over the mic so the blanket isn't moving the mics. But in this case, we have these little TV trays, brought in a little tray, put it in front of the kick drum and just draped the blanket over the tray and over the top and the sides of the kick drum and it works perfectly. And what's nice about that is you can actually lift up the blanket while it's still hanging there and adjust the mics if you need to change things while you're getting sounds. The next thing I'll mention was when it comes to mic placement. So typically I will use room mics or a mono kit mic plus overheads and stuff like that. So this time I didn't use any room mics. I brought my R88 over and I used it as an overhead and it sounds phenomenal as an overhead. It's like just gold. It's pure gold. And the way I positioned it was the way that I always position my overheads. I like to sort of come in the kit 
at an angle over the ride symbol. I essentially want the stereo imaging to be pointed directly over the toms with the snare in the center. So the image from the overheads is less directly focused on the cymbals and it's more focused on getting the snare right up the middle, almost like a distant mic for the toms. So the toms are close mic'd and then the R88 is acting as a distant mic, which really captures a lot of extra low end that you might not be getting depending on your overhead placement. So I just sneak that R88 right over the overhead. And because it's a stereo mic, it's just on one stand and I can adjust the height to make the relationship with the snare and the toms just right for the sound that I'm going for. I really dug that and I'll show you what the overhead sound like. They sound phenomenal. I'll also mention getting the overhead position right before you even start is so crucial to a, an amazing drum sound. Listen to what these overheads sound like solo, just the overheads. Pretty good, right? <laughs> now the rest of the mics I did fairly similar to how I would as far as close mic placement. I actually don't keep the mics that close to the drums. I still want a normal sound for the drums I want to change the environment to make the drums sound more dead or actually make the drum sound dead. I don't want to place the mics to be very, very close sounding. I sort of like the relationship between the drum and the mic placement, how it is with the tom mics and the snare mic and stuff like that. So for the snare, I put this, what's called a, um... so for the snare, I put this thing on it. It's called the, uh, the big fat snare drum. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Just put this thing on there and whoo, game changer as far as the snare sound. Obviously I make sure that the snare is tuned and sounds good. Put that on there. On the toms I have the moon gel drum honey little dot sticky things on those and on the floor tom there's a little extra gaff tape and you can just use like masking tape. Gaff tape works the best in my opinion. Just fold it up, slap it on there. Sometimes even roll up like a little piece of tissue or toilet paper, hot commodity right now. Fold it up and just slap some tape over it. It really helps deaden that drum in a really nice way or tea towels. I know there's a, there's a bunch of different ways that you can get into the deadening. But making the drums sound dead instead of placing the mics super close to the drums. I mean, you can obviously do that. That's, that's a way to do that. But for the sound that I got, I wanted the drums to actually sound dead and then make the room dead as well. So by treating the room and deadening the drums and covering the bass drum, let's see how these drums actually sound. Those are nice. I'm sorry. I would try to keep my opinion to myself, but those, that's, I, here's the thing. I like tight sounding drums almost to a fault. I like the drums to be punchy and fat and tight. And I think that's just the coolest drum sound that there is. So let me know what you think. Do you like the tight drums or do you like it big and roomy? I like it tight. I also like it big and roomy sometimes. It depends. It really depends. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If there's any other questions you guys have about the setup or anything, I think I covered it all. I think I showed you everything. Let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Hit the subscribe button because you know you wanna see more of this stuff. Last thing I'll say, head on over to andrewmastersmusic.com if you're looking for a new mixer or you want somebody to drum on your song, you can book me right now. Head on over there. You can also find my Instagram and other social media stuff on there if you just want to just go over there and just hang out. You can do that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.